Good evening, folks. Thank you all for getting on the stream this evening. I trust that everyone has had a fantastic and positive afternoon and now evening. I'm sure that many of you are uh, preparing yourself for the upcoming <laughs> holiday. <laughs> you know, 4th of July, Independence Day. <laughs> What I intend to do tonight in this stream, for my ladies that are watching this stream tonight, this stream tonight, I will tell you, it's, uh, it's focused to you, and it's focused towards you, so I want you to listen very closely, and I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm going to share with you tonight in this stream, and I'll tell you why I mean for you to listen very closely and very carefully. Because your life could depend on you. Make no mistake about it. Your life could depend on you listening to what I'm going to say to you tonight. So I want you to pay close attention to what I'm going to share with you tonight in this stream. You see the title. Behind the Veil. Anything that's behind a veil is hidden. It's secret. It's disguised. So the subject tonight is behind the veil, inside the mind of men who abuse women. And make no mistake about it, many women are being physically, verbally, sexually abused in this country, all throughout this country. I'll do another stream later where I go into detail as to how many men are also being abused. But tonight, this subject is for you. And so, ladies, I want you to really sit tight and buckle in so you can hear what I'm going to share with you tonight. Again, this subject tonight could, in fact, save your life. And I mean your physical life. But many of you are enduring abuse untold abuse. Many of you have had your jaw broken because of physical abuse. You've had your arms broken, your legs broken, your ribs cracked. And unfortunately, and to my sad regret, many of you believe that this same abuse is a display or somehow a way of him showing that he loves you. I want to get into it tonight and I want you to listen because again this could save your life this could save your life I want to I hope tonight's stream will allow you to get your Independence Day <laughs> and then July 4th will mean something different for you it'll mean something entirely different for you if you can get your Independence Day from the physical mental emotional abuse that you're enduring right now and many of you've been endur enduring it for years for a very long time you've been in the hospital in the emergency rooms <laughs> you're all all kinds of psych medication i mean you're just uh you're in you're in a lot of things i will tell you one in five women in the united states has a mental health problem such as depression ptsd or an eating disorder because when you're depressed and you're unhappy, a lot of times if you're being physically abused or emotionally or verbally abused, you'll take it out on your fork, you'll take it out on your spoon. That's where the eating disorder comes into play. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and depression. Now you're on all kinds of depressed depression medication. Many of you have a whole medicine cabinet full of depression medication. Medication for PTSD anxiety medication all kinds of medication again like i said one in five and i believe that number could even be higher now are on some kind of psych medication all right and here's the problem women are twice as likely to be diagnosed you're twice as likely to be diagnosed with anxiety as opposed to men. Depression is the most common mental health problem in women. 
with twice as many women experiencing it in their lifetime than men. And before I go on forward, I want to shout out to all of uh, you that, get, again, got on the stream. Good evening. Uh, if, as you come into the building, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. Show your support for the channel by supporting the channel via Cash App, dollar sign, capital C, capital G, 4033. Shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers, all of my new ones that jumped on to support the channel. Thank you for rocking with your brother. I appreciate you. Uh, and thank you for all of you that have remained faithful in my Facebook group. I support you. I appreciate you. I hear someone say that I'm late and I'm watching you. <laughs> Put your name in the chat room. That way I can see you. This is being streamed via Facebook. Therefore, Facebook has, for some reason, they don't show your names, guys. I, I do apologize. So uh, if you would be so kind as to put your name into the chat room, that way I know who I'm looking at and who I'm speaking to. Again, I thank you for your support. Oh, shout out to Margaret. Thank you. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight, Mom. I love you and I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, with that being said, shout out to Gail for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to Abdul for getting on the stream tonight. And again, you know, this kind of issue and situation is more than likely being diagnosed by women. Men are not reporting this stuff. Men, men don't do it. And I'll tell you, men don't do it for a lot of different reasons. There's a stigma with men. Men speaking out uh, about their mental illness in their minds, in our minds, and a lot of times it's a form of weakness or it's not manly. You know, men feeling depression and anxiety or any other mental health illness. It's not unusual that we don't report these kind of issues. So this is why more women are diagnosed with uh, mental illness and depression and anxiety and PTSD and eating disorders, which has many of our women overweight, uh, diagnosed as obese. And in a lot of ways, what the society has done with these issues where women are concerned is they've they've coddled them they've made them believe that what they're feeling and how they're feeling is okay to feel that way and don't worry about it i am woman watch me roar but that does not help women that does not help women in situations where they are absolutely in a suffering situation where they're being abused where they're being verbally abused physically abused, bones being broken, hospitalized. Um, this kind of thing is overlooked and pushed to the side as if it's really not that important. I I want to, I hope and pray that this, this stream tonight is going to help all of you ladies that watch my stream for you to find your independence day, July 4th. That's tomorrow. <laughs> I want July 4th to mean something different for you going forward. Let us continue. Depression in and of itself, where women are concerned, is most common mental health problem in women. It's the most common. With twice as many women experiencing it in their lifetime, again, than men. Over a quarter of young women aged between 16 and 24 years of age report having a common mental health problem in any given week. In any given week. In the past year, 25.6 of women in America sought mental health treatment compared to 14% of men. You see that you see this you see the disparaging separation between men and women getting diagnosed. You're looking at 25.6% among women and yet 14% among men. Women are more likely than men to have received any mental health treatment taking mental medication for their mental health and received counseling or therapy from a mental health professional in the past 12 months. Well, I will tell you this, uh, folks, in reality, and this is let's talk about it now. We keep it 100%. I like to keep everything above. <laughs> Many of you ladies that are receiving therapy, your therapist needs a therapy. Needs therapy. Uh, your therapist is on some type of psych medication. They didn't tell you that, uh, but it's true. So you're looking at one psych, per, one person on psych medication talking to another individual on psych medication, trying to give both 
give that other individual clarity over their psychological or mental illness. You know, I don't see how the blind can lead the blind because they both fall into the ditch. But this is an issue. I hope to be able to help many of you ladies that watch my stream tonight. Let's get into it. When we start talking about uh, men who are abusive, let's talk about men's mental health issues first. Men that have mental health issues. And again, it showed that I just, I just stated that 14% actually are diagnosed. Why men's mental health is important. Although mental illness are more prevalent in women than in men, men suffering from mental illness are less likely to receive mental health treatment or diagnosis. There are many reasons for this. And one of them is the pressure men face to man up, tough it out, <laughs> you know, tough it out, man, deal with it. You're a man. The stigma of men speaking out is that it is seen as a form of weakness. And like I said, not manly. Men feeling depression and anxiety or any other mental health illness is not unusual and is nothing to feel ashamed of. Other reasons that may impact a man's mental health journey or culture, fatherhood, race, socioeconomic status. These stigmas are real and deeply affect men as nearly one in 10 men experience depression or anxiety, but less than half will receive any kind of treatment. And more than four times as many men and women die from suicide every year as a result of mental illness. This is all gonna make sense in just a second. Just follow me, ladies. Symptoms of mental illness differ in men from women. Re recognizing the signs that you or someone you love may have a mental disorder is the first step towards getting the right help and treatment. The earlier someone receives treatment, the more effective it can be. Nearly one in 10 men, again, experience some form of depression or anxiety, but sadly, less than half seek treatment. What are the statistics? For many mental health disorders, men are less likely to speak up and get treatment. They're also less likely to be diagnosed because of this Knowing the statistics can help raise awareness about men's mental health, encourage men to take a step towards getting treatment, and validate the feelings men in, with mental health disorders may be experiencing according to the Mental Health of America. Though men account for about 10% of patients with uh, symptoms like bulimia, anorexia, men with eating disorders, as I mentioned among women, are less likely to seek professional help. Over 6 million men suffer from depression per year, but male depression often goes undiagnosed. More than 3 million men in the United States have panic disorder, agoraphobia, or any other phobia. 2.3 million men in the United States have panic disorders. Again, they're affected with bipolar disorders and an equal amount of men and women develop the illness. The age of onset for men is between 16 to 25 years of age. Follow me. One of the leading causes of disability in America is schizophrenia. Approximately 3.5 million people in the U.S. have been diagnosed and 90% of those who are diagnosed are age 30 and they are men. Follow me. What are the warning signs, ladies? Men and women can develop most of the same mental disorders and conditions but may experience different symptoms and develop different coping tools. When depression occurs in men, it may be masked by unhealthy coping behavior. It could be unmasked. This could come in the form of many different things. It could come in the form of alcoholism. 
It could come in the form of drug addiction. It could come in the form of uh, violent behavior, short-tempered behavior. Okay? It can come in many, many different forms as a coping mechanism or as a coping tool. These are some of the warning signs. Symptoms of mental health disorder in men may look like this. Escapist behavior, such as spending a lot of time at work or on sports. Physical symptoms, such as headaches, digestive problems, and pain. Misuse of alcohol, again, as I repeated, as I mentioned, or drugs. Controlling violent or abusive behavior. Anger, irritability, aggressiveness, inappropriate anger. Risky behavior, such as reckless driving. Noticeable changes in mood, energy levels, or appetite. Difficulty concentrating, feeling restless, or on the edge. Again, the title tonight, for those of you folks who have just jumped on the stream, is called Behind the Veil, Inside the Mind of Men Who Abuse Women. The mindset of insecure men is often undetected. And it's very elusive and can easily be disguised with kindness, romantic gestures, and lofty promises, only to ultimately be revealed as mental illness. Using physical violence as a response to insecure, self-absorbed men. Regardless of nationality, folks, it's not a black thing, a white thing, an Asian thing. No, regardless of nationalities, these issues remain. And many of these problems go unnoticed, unreported, and many women, not just in this country, but all over the world, lose their lives as a result of this kind of behavior. There's a, uh, there's a charge that they have in Mexico, and that charge is based on the deletion of women. In general, I'm trying to call the name off. For those of you in the chat room, if you can remember the name of what that crime is called in Mexico for taking the life of women in Mexico, please put that in the chat room. It's a real law that's on the books in Mexico. And it's focused at uh, women who are deleted based on the fact that they're women. Usually 99.9% of the time at the hands of men. And there is a name for it. For those of you that find that name out, just go to work for me and put that in the chat room. I appreciate it. Let's continue. It goes on to say, and this is uh, what I'm reading right now is in the description of uh, this particular stream. So you can go back and read it yourself as well in your own leisure. Again, this is regardless of nationalities. And these are men who feel threatened. Whether the threat is real or whether the threat is imagined, it's resulted in many women facing brutal sexual assault, vicious beatings, and death at the hands of men they were intimately involved with. Today, with mental illness being gravely overlooked and men in general, black men in particular, suffering with daddy issues. The propensity for misdirected violence and misguided anger. Many women are constantly placed in harm's way. There are too many black women and black men dying, people being injured, and sadly, far too many black children growing up in violent homes to later in their life become victims themselves or abusers themselves or abuses themselves. Okay, let's continue. Now, when we start talking about the abuse and the mindset of men who abuse women, and I will tell you, uh, guys that hear my stream, if you're currently abusing your wife, your fiance, or your girlfriend, go get some help, man. Go get the help that you need. Because I will tell you, it's more than likely more about you than it is about what's going on with her. And uh, if she's violent and if she's verbally abusive, if she's disrespectful, 
if she's masculine in her behavior, if she has no respect for you at all, I mean, we know today in, in this modern culture, more than likely that is the mentality in so many cases. Uh, to my sad regret, with a lot of women, like you've heard me say in many streams, there are no wives. There are no wives. Um, and as a result of the modern woman falling for the culture and the mindset, the thought process, and the narrative, and this whole idea that I don't need a man, I can do it all by myself, and I got my career, and I have my education, and I have my job, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. A lot of that thought process and a lot of the narrative has served to create a lot of the climate that gives way to a lot of the mental illness that, that not only men experience, but that women are experiencing large, in large part, again, 25.6% are diagnosed and I believe those numbers are higher. That's only what's diagnosed. 14% of men are diagnosed. I believe that number is extremely higher than 14%, but that's all that's being diagnosed. And when you look at what you see today in terms of the mindset, the modern mindset, you can see how the mindset and the modern day narrative in this culture where family relationships, male and female relationships in particular, are concerned, you can see where this mindset could lend to the problem that I'm gonna that I'm speaking on tonight, no doubt. And uh, femicide, thank you, thank you. Uh, wh whoever put that in the chat room, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. That crime, and shout out to the person who put that in the chat room. The crime for abused women in Mexico is called femicide. They have a they have a whole law on the books in, in Mexico. Just for that, just for that particular crime itself. That's telling you. Thank you. Shout out to Abdul for putting that in the chat box. I appreciate you. There's a whole law on the books in the country just for just to speak to the violence that's being taken place against women in, in Mexico. And I mean, it's huge. I don't have the stats in front of me right now, but I looked it up back during the time when Shankola Robinson um, unfortunately lost her life in Mexico. I looked into that whole title of femicide and I have that information. I simply don't have it in front of me, but I'll tell you, they have a whole law in Mexico <laughs> just to prosecute for that crime that goes to show you how big it is you know and i would imagine if one country can take notice of it it's huge in many 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 different countries you know unfortunately there are a lot of women that are in these circumstances and ladies if you're listening to my stream and you fit the description of what i'm going to say next I want you to know that you don't have to stay in that situation. You can get out of that situation. All you have to do is make a decision. I don't care what the I, what the mentality of a woman is. I don't care how uh, what your situation is with that woman that you're particularly in relationship with. And this is for the guys. You don't have to beat her. You don't have to abuse her physically. No, nah, man. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna tell you how easy it is. It's not a long sentence. You ready? Leave. That's it. Just leave, man. Just leave, leave the relationship, that's all. What is with you guys that do this? That you have to beat her and even ultimately, sadly, take her, whole, take her life because you can't get yourself together get the help that you need just leave man just leave there is nothing manly about you beating a female no not at all you don't get no brownie points for that man you know just leave and ladies if you are being stupid enough i had to say it straight 
you know, I gotta give you the coffee with uh, the coffee with no cream, and I give you, I gotta give you the shot with no chaser. If you are stupid enough to think that he cares about you while he's beating you, you are out of your mind. You don't beat what you love. Understand that. You don't break bones with what you love. You don't take the life of what you love. No, you don't do that. Love, true love, will not cause you to behave that way. It will not cause you to behave that way. But ladies, I want to tell you something, man. Uh, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? You've heard me say, many of you that have watched my stream over the last year, I've said this very clearly. We don't get what we want. We get who we are. You have to take a real deep introspect, ladies, and find out who you are personally. If you have a low self-esteem, if you don't think much of yourself, then you'll allow some no good brother to come into your life and further, further confirm your own feelings and beliefs about yourself. If it's low self-esteem, you'll attract somebody who will keep confirming that same thought process. And the more you allow yourself to be beaten, the more you allow yourself to be verbally abused, the more you allow these things, the more confirmed you'll be in your mind that you're not worth anything, that you're not valuable. And then you will continue to attract the same kind of man. And like I said, to my sad regret, many women lose their lives. Many women lose their lives. They're beat to death. Shot. Stabbed to death. Many women. More women than that than, than are reported in the news and in the media. The numbers are staggering. The numbers are staggering. You know? So why do men verbally, physically, emotionally, financially, psychologically, sexually abuse women who are their wives or fiancés or girlfriends. Why? Why do they do this? The overarching conscience or subconscious goals of partner abuse, male husband and wife abuse, fiancé abuse, girlfriend, boyfriend abuse, demean, control, or punish. But why does a particular man treat his partner that way? It's a good question. Some people think that there is only one reason why a man abuses a woman. They blame it 100% on patriarchy. They think it is always and only about the male privilege. It goes deeper than that. But I think there are many reasons why a particular man might abuse his wife or abuse his girlfriend. And why men are abusive to women lists that have 71 and beyond that possible ways of why this happens. People always tend to reason, uh, have reasons for thinking what they think and doing what they do. Anybody can come up with a reason for why they did something. Doesn't mean the reason you came up with is correct or that it's healthy or that it's moral. Again, I told you, according to the stats, and this is what's diagnosed, 14% of men are diagnosed with mental illness, but 24.6 is diagnosed with mental illness that are women. You see how we're all both running into one another? We're both running into one another, men with mental illness and women with mental illness. And I'll tell you something, this is irregardless of how you look. I don't care how much, how how, how nice you, you, uh, you get your hair done, ladies. Yeah. I, I don't care how nice the dress is. I don't care if you're wearing Dolce Gabbana. I don't care if you're wearing Gucci. 
I don't care if you're wearing Michael Kors. I don't care what you're wearing. I don't care if you're wearing red bottoms or wearing uh, shoes from the local store downtown in your respective areas. It doesn't matter how much you paid for your hair. Now, or if you have no hair at all. None of that matters. Whether you have long vulture nails, stuck on eyelashes or no eyelashes at all. None of that means anything. None of it. Strip down bare. These issues exist more than what's reported. I promise you this. More than what's reported. Again, people always have their reason for thinking what they think and doing what they do. Anybody can come up one. You know, excuses are like buttholes. Everybody has one. <laughs> you know, they may not be good, again, or healthy reasons. Uh, they may not be rational or logical reasons. They may not be conscious reasons. We are each made up of our biology, genetics and health, right? Everything that's ever happened to us in our lifetime and everything we've ever been exposed to, that in combination is what creates our thought process when we become exposed to each other, all right? both conscious and subconscious, and feelings in the moment, thoughts and feelings lead to behavior, all right? Why are men abusive to women is the question. Again, the title tonight, Behind the Veil, Inside the Mind of Men Who Abuse Women. There is a long list of possible answers to this question, no doubt. And why particular men exhibit potential abusive behavior towards their wife, girlfriend, or their significant other out there, right? Uh, it could be a number of anything, a number of things, anything from well-intentioned but unaware of what he's doing, again. <laughs> all, both are equally as destructive, all right? And it is coming into full-blown uh, full blown view as malicious sociopath behavior. Okay? Knowing why someone does something can help you understand that person better, and it also can help them understand themselves better. But understanding why isn't the end of it. Reasons for behavior don't excuse behavior. There has to be willingness to use the information made available to you to get the necessary help that you and I, as men, may desperately need. Again, if, if we stop running away from the problems that exist and the problems that cause us to behave the way we behave and act the way we act, then we can get the help that we need. I said in a previous stream, I said, you know, the hardest image to look at is your image when you look in the mirror. You're the hardest image you'll ever have to look at. Because looking in the image at yourself, there's no one else in the room. So who else can you blame it on? That's why most people avoid looking in the mirror. That's why. We would rather throw off every situation, every circumstance onto someone else. It's easier to deflect and throw the blame onto someone else. I'll tell you, it's easier to talk about the problems that we see as opposed to dealing with the root cause of each problem. You know, once you see the problem, understand what you're looking at. You're looking at the fruit from that tree. The fruit does not represent, nor can it be any better, nor can it be any worse than the quality of the root that it springs from. Everything has a root first. A it's a root down and then it sends a shoot up. That's what produces the fruit. That's what produces what we see. So we have to get to the root of every problem. You know, I didn't want this to, I didn't intend for this to be a long stream, but I think this is uh, a very needed subject to touch on. You know, no doubt. Adults are responsible for recognizing when their behavior and attitudes are harmful 
to not this not just themselves but to others and then doing the work to figure out how to stop it at some point it no longer matters why he does what he does listen to this ladies at some point it no longer matters why he does what he does if you're being physically abused if you're being verbally abused which usually leads up to physical abuse and then to my sad regret ultimately for so many women not just in this society but all over the world some reported and some never reported some women that have lost their lives, their bodies, even to this day, have never been found. That's sad, man. They've never been found. Their families have never gotten closure. Never gotten closure. And their lives were taken at the hands of an insecure, self-absorbed, mentally ill man who they were in an intimate relationship with. No doubt. This is a reality. This is the reality. At some point, again, no matter what he does, it only matters whether he chooses to change and whether his partner is up for giving him the opportunity to change. But let me say this to you, ladies. You don't want to be the agency of provoking a situation. This is a huge problem in this culture. I will tell you, if men are to take accountability, if men are suffering from mental illness, if men are also guilty of executing abuse against their wives or their girlfriends or their fiancés, and the men that hear my stream, if you're guilty of this, then you need to take accountability and get the help that you need before you find yourself in prison or dead because you refuse to get the help you need. A whole lot of things describe being manly. A whole lot of things describe taking responsibility as a man. And that's part of it. That's part of it. You know? Um, so, again, ladies, at some point, he has to also take responsibility and get the help that he needs. Someone said completely out of your mind. Let me know who that was. Put your name in the chat box. <laughs> put, the, put your name in the chat box. Let me see who you are. So I'll know who made the comment. <laughs> 71 questions. Why are men abusive to women? One, being pampered as a child. A lot of times in single parent homes, and we know this is the issue in our community, in many communities, but in the black community in particular, a lot of us come up in single parent homes. We come up in single parent homes. And a lot of times the boys who are in these single parent homes, they're pampered. In fact, they're made very, a lot of times insecure as to who they are as men. While the girls who may be their siblings are taught to be masculine. So the men who grow up in these kind of environments a lot of times become very soft, very insecure. And that leads to a lot of problems later on in their psychology, in their life, and how they behave themselves. Number two, being abused as a child. That's another thing that affects a lot of men. Being bullied. That's another thing. They in turn then become bullies of others a lot of times. Again, the abused always a lot of times becomes the abuser. Previous abuse by another woman. That's possible. Witnessing his father abuse his mother. That's huge. That's huge. Witness, witnessing his mother abuse his father. Or both in both ways dealing with emotions he may lack skills in these areas dealing with emotions a lot of men lack skills in dealing with emotions taking care of himself managing his anger budgeting his money 
being assertive or communication. Uh, he may be he may be any of the following. Number one, frustrated, exhausted, stressed, feeling threatened emotionally, mentally, or physically, or financially. Confusing aggression with assertiveness, driven by dictomous thinking, unaware of the effect of his actions, insecure, overreactive, a perfectionist, overreactive again, and an adrenaline junkie, looking for the looking for the rush. Um, addicted to shopping, gambling, sex, abuse of alcohol or drugs, projecting his own ways of thinking, doing or being uh, onto her. Lazy, self-centered, and to my sad regret, with the climate and the culture today, women hating. <laughs> Shout out to Margaret. Thank you. <laughs> I see you, mom. Drawn to the game of abuse. It's just a few things, folks. He may have a low self-esteem, which is... Again, like I said earlier in the stream, we don't attract what we want, we attract who we are. So if you have a low self-esteem, ladies, you're gonna attract a man who also have a low, has a low self-esteem. That's a fact. That's a fact. Because if his, high, if his, if his self-esteem was high and you had a low self-esteem, he would never be attracted to you. He would never be attracted to you. We are attracted to who we are. So again, low self-esteem, he may have that problem. Poor impulse control. Physical illness, brain injury, dementia, depression, anxiety, a bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress, or borderline personality. That's just a few. He simply just simply maybe want to hurt. He, he want to be heard. He wants to get uh, her attention. He may want to get your attention. A better position where he's concerned. He may want to just simply get his way. You see how all of these descriptions line up with how line up with how he was raised? A lot of these things line up with how he came up in his life. You know? And a lot of again with men, 14% is diagnosed with mental illness. So many, so many of us as men are walking around with mental illness undiagnosed. And it's masked, it's masked with lifting weights. It's masked with buying clothes. It's masked with keeping a, a well-groomed appearance. It's, it's masked with a lot of things. But again, stripped down bare, you'll find that there's more problems that exist than you're able to even see. Again, like I said in the beginning of the description, it's elusive. It's usually masked with romantic gestures and good promises and things of that nature when you meet this man. He's very attractive, well-dressed. You have no idea what's going on in this guy's head. And likewise, he may have no idea what's going on in yours. You're diagnosed at 24.6%. And that's only what's diagnosed. He's diagnosed at 14%. And again, that's only what's diagnosed. And those two individuals, they meet each other. And we wonder why we have domestic violence. We wonder why we have women losing their lives. We wonder how... Uh, we wonder why we have women getting physically abused, sexually abused in many relationships. We wonder why. This is why. Because these two individuals meet each other. They meet each other, and in the beginning, oh man, it's like you're on a honeymoon floating on a cloud. Huh. You know? It looks so nice and so beautiful in the beginning, only to find out, and many of you ladies have found out, only after you found yourself married, that this man did a 360 degree turn. He was so nice all the way up until the marriage. And right after you got married, he started becoming more and more possessive, more and more and more dysfunctionally controlled, right? And you were trying to figure out, scratching your head, what's going on with this guy? I see that. I agree 100%. Someone said in the chat room, please state your name. When you write a comment, put your name in the chat room so I know who you are. On both sides, men and women, that's 100% correct. Oh, yeah, it happens on both sides. It happens on both sides. I'm assuming that 
I'm a, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe that response came from a man in the stream. <laughs> I don't know. But I will say this. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, shout out to Marley. <laughs> shout out to you, Mom. <laughs> You're right. It does happen on both sides. It happens on both sides. It happens on both sides indeed. Um, but tonight's focus on the stream is to focus on men who do the abuse. I know it happens on both sides, no doubt. It happens on both sides. That's why I always talk about the attitude, behaviors, and conduct of the modern woman. That's That's been the whole catalog of all of my streams. And I talk about that for a reason. Because most of those behaviors, if not all of those behaviors, lead to the same thing I'm talking about tonight. It leads to that. It leads to much of the abuse that women are receiving. It leads to it. You know? So, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this stream helped someone. I really do hope it helps some of you ladies that may hear this stream later. Um, because it's important. And, uh, and you need to gain your independence this year. For those of you that sat around for many, many different years of allowing yourself to be abused. Allowing yourself to be beat. Allowing your bones and your body to be broken. Allowing yourself to be told that you're nothing. Allowed to be in, allowed yourself to be told constantly uh, and being treated like garbage. Cast away, pushed away, thrown away. And yet, and yet, that same man who did it, he wanted to have sex with you. Right after he did all of that abuse, after he beat you, after he called you names, after he told you you were nothing and that you were trash and nobody's going to want you other than him you know I'm many I'm sure many of you heard that one you know after he did all of that and you've now gotten to the point where you actually believe everything he told you you believe that you believe your garbage you believe your trash and you actually believe everything you're being how you're being treated that you deserve it you actually believe that everything he calls you and everything he does to you, you deserve it. And therefore, it's your fault. No, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You may have some issues about yourself that you need to get together. No doubt. You may need therapy. No doubt. You may need to get your self-esteem up. You may need to find your true power, which is your femininity, your self-worth so that you can make better decisions and attract better men in your life. But you don't deserve what you're experiencing right now in that current relationship that you're in where you're being beat physically and abused and caused all kind of names. Ah, I, I can only imagine, man. Well, this is your Independence Day. Celebrate Independence Day and get out of that situation. I shout out to you. I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I hope this helped many of you that hear this stream. And for any of you that are receiving this kind of treatment or abuse or you're suffering from domestic violence, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Hours are available 24-7. Languages are in English, Spanish, and over 200 different countries throughout. With interpretation services, learn more about this by dialing one 800 799-7233. Again, that's the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Hours are available 24-7. Languages are in English, Spanish, and over 200 different languages. Through interpretation services, learn more by dialing 1-800-799-7233. And you can get yourself the help that you may desperately need and also get therapy. And uh, let me see here what's said. Uh, what you say here? I hear a comment. See a comment here. But it's not your fault for him beating you. This is Margaret. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I will tell you when you're dealing with a man who has mental illness, ladies, who has issues, daddy issues, all kind of self-esteem issues, insecure, self-absorbed. When you're dealing with a man like that then your mouth can put you in situations that your body can't get you out of. 
I want to say that to you. You need to understand that. I'm telling you to get your independence there, but I'm also getting you to take accountability for some of your behaviors that got you in a situation that you're in. Again, like I said, we attract who we are, not what we want. Many of you ladies, you're in bad situations and you don't know how. Close your mouth and just get out of the situation. If you know it's violent and you know it's against your own well-being, why are you staying in the situation to the point where you now know it's violent and you're being provocative in that same relationship? Make that make sense. Make that make sense. And you're still giving your body to this man every time he beats you, every time he abuses you verbally, every single time he promises you, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Baby, you know I love you. And then he smacks you underneath the refrigerator next week. And then he beats you underneath your bed the following day. And right after apologizing, you give your body back to him again sexually. Ladies, you have to take some responsibility too. We're talking about them behind, the, we're speaking about a subject tonight about going behind that veil. That's the thing that's covering his mentality that you may not see, that you may not understand. But it's the mind of men who may abuse women. But again, like you said, you heard me say in many streams, the pendulum swings in both directions. If you're in an abusive relationship, ladies, get out. Get out. Stop making excuses for him. Telling him, oh, maybe it's my fault. Nah, it is your fault if you want to stand there and get beat. That, I'm not going to deny you that. But why he's behaving the way he's behaving is not your fault. No. That has more to do with what's going on with him needing mental health because he has suffered from a mental illness, insecurities, self-absorbed, selfish. It could be a number of issues, all of which lead to how he was raised, what environment he grew up in, and likewise, you behave the way you behave because of your environment and how you came up in, how you came up. Again, two mentally ill individuals, they meet each other. And then you have these kind of circumstances, situations, and results. And sadly, many of you are losing your life. Many of you are in the emergency rooms right now. Many of you know someone right now that's in the emergency room. Many of you have gotten that late night phone call from your girlfriend, from your niece, from your granddaughter, from your mother. Many of you have gotten that late night phone call because they were being physically abused or beaten. Many of you have visited the nurse, the, uh, the uh, ICUs. Some of you left the ICU today visiting someone that was physically abused in a relationship. Some of you have gone to funerals of individuals that have lost their lives. Someone said the only person that can spank me are my parents, and both of them are no longer. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> so, ladies uh, that watch my stream, I hope that this helped you. I don't know how many, I haven't seen many streams like this, um, but I hope this one made, made, the, the, made sense to you. And serves for you to make that final decision today to get your independence there. For those of you that are in that situation and you don't know what to do, as I close, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Those hours are between 24, those hours operate 24 7. They operate 24 7. That's the National Domestic Violence Hotline, ladies. Um, they're in all different languages, from English to Spanish, and over 200 different plus languages also. And it's through interpretation. To learn more about that particular uh, hotline and that particular service, you can dial 1-800-799-7233. With that being said, I thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. For those of you that came into the building, I hope that you hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. 
get this kind of information out, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. When you hit the when you hit the like button, let me explain a little bit about social media in this particular platform. When you hit the like button, you send the message to the algorithms of YouTube. That means the message gets to more people than just you that's watching my stream right now currently. When you hit the share button, it, spent, it sends the stream to those that are in your, your personal sphere of influence. So that's how you support a stream. And with subjects like these and many others that are important enough to get to as many people as you possibly can, this is how you do it. How do you support the stream in other ways? You support the stream via cash, cash app. That's capital G, capital C, 4033, if you should desire to support the stream in that way. That helps me do a lot of things where you are concerned, where this platform is concerned. And again, with that being said, I thank you all for your support, truly. I really thank you all for your support. Those of you that remain loyal with Let's Talk About It since I started last year. And I hope this stream gets the help to the necessary women that need the help. That being said, folks, we are out. I am your host, Charles Chambliss. This is another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. Have a blessed week this week. Be safe tomorrow on the holiday, folks. Don't drink and drive, you know, put your seatbelt on. You know, you, you, you know the message. But enjoy yourself. Get back home to your families and be safe. With that being said, have a fantastic and positive night. God bless.